Welcome to Sew and Tell, where sewists from fashion, theater, and indie sewing bring their different perspectives to the hottest topics in the sewing community. I'm Amanda Carestio. I'm Meg Healy. And I'm Kate Zynard. Today on the podcast, we're snuggling into our winter sewing and talking about the fabrics and patterns to use for the coziest possible me maids. We'll each share a little something in our Sojo segment, and then we'll ask you to share something too. But before we jump in, let's take a little moment to celebrate our one year podiversary. Woo! Oh my Woo! gosh. So, I cannot believe it's been one year. That's insane. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? So it so this episode drops on Thursday, and Friday is technically the one year. So we're going to be really close. Um, you may be listening to this on the actual day. Uh, yeah, it's really exciting. I can't believe it's been a year. I know. I feel like in some ways it feels like it's been longer than that. And in oh, some ways yeah. it feels <laughs> shorter because I feel like I have a lot left to talk about. <laughs> well, that's good because we plan to keep going. We do. We do. Yeah. And then I'm just also like, what did we talk about for a year? I know. <laughs> I know. We've been talking for a year. Yeah, about we've been sewing. talking for a year. Yeah. Right. I'm glad we're not done. Yeah, no. No, and I'd no. say um, for all everybody who's listening, do be on the lookout, um, particularly on our Instagram feed, and we'll be doing some fun things um, throughout the week to celebrate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and thank how was you your trip, for listening, Kate? you guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just all, also wanted to check in with Kate to see yeah. how the trip went. Oh, um, it back. went really well. Um, I had a blast. Um, I was traveling with my in-laws. I don't know if I mentioned that on air before, but it it was very good. Um, there were only a couple murdery moments. Um, and what? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're traveling with. Well, you don't know Meg, but when you're traveling with your in-laws for 16 days, there are moments when oh. you want to stab people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've traveled with them. My in-laws oh, okay. too. You have. I okay. understand. They just were your in-laws <laughs> at the time. I mean, it's just hard traveling with people it's in true. general. It's true. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we had uh, we had a great time. We did lots of stuff. We saw lots of art and lots of architecture. And I ate, oh my God, so much good food, you guys. Oh, the food, I uh, bet. The schnitzel, I just, I miss the schnitzel so much. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I love I love I think we found an episode title right there. <laughs> Done. Done. But I did love kind of following along with your adventures while you were yeah. out and about Kate. That was super fun. Oh, I'm glad. And I, I fell down for a little while. Amanda had to send me a, a message on Instagram. She's like, Kate, you haven't said anything in four days. I need to know what you're doing. I needed some distraction. <laughs> <laughs> and did you wear everything that you made and brought? I did. did everything um, ex- at a moment, except for my um, my jacket. Um, my why well, can't I remember the name of the jacket? The blazer or yeah, the, the blazer. symmetrical one, oh, the Silverton blazer. Yes, the Silverton blazer. Oh my gosh, oh, I can't believe it. Okay, I did not wear that. Um, it just never quite worked out right. Everything else I wore, I didn't necessarily get a picture of everything. We ran into. It, the weather was a lot warmer the first yeah. week than I expected oh. it to be, and mm-hmm. so I kind of I kind of ran into this problem where I'm like I can't wear half the stuff that I made to bring because it's too it's too hot. Um, mm-hmm. So luckily I had thrown a couple Roscoe blouses in at the last minute, and so I wore a lot of that that first week. And then the second week the temperature dropped a lot, and it took me a little bit of time to figure out the right layers to right. Yeah. be warm. It's always so hard when you travel. It is. It's just unexpected. And this time yeah. of year, too, I feel like you never know. I mean, if you had been yes. at home uh-huh. in Denver, it would have been the same exact thing. We had some hot days. We had some major snow while you were gone. Right, but that's Denver. Like, everybody in Vienna was telling me, this is not normal, not normal. weather yeah, for this no, time really. of year. And so I was like, well, it's it's lovely. I didn't pull out my coat until we had been there about eight days. Hmm. Um, just absolutely didn't need it. So that was great. Well, that's nice. Yeah. I could talk okay. about it for the entire episode, but I probably shouldn't. We should probably get started on our actual topic. Mm-hmm. We might need a blog mm-hmm. post, though. Oh, yeah, I know. I As soon as I can get my computer to stop hating me, I will. Start working on blog post. <laughs> <laughs> so, so should we jump in let's into today's topics? Yes, let's. 
Okay, so the snow is falling and our sewing to-do lists are falling with more sweaters galore. So sure, cozy, fuzzy, and warm fabrics are fun to wear, but what about sewing with them? We'll discuss our favorite cozy fabrics and share some tips and tricks when working with them. So uh, do you guys sew a lot of cozy things? I sew, no. I sew a lot of cozy things. I don't get too super experimental with fabric types, though. Mm-hmm. I mean, I definitely will dip into some flannels and also some sweater knits um, and sweatshirting. I'm a big fan of French Terry. Um, oh, but, yeah. But I don't mm-hmm. get too super crazy with, like, the super textural stuff. Mm-hmm. I actually have just started to dabble in this. Well, I started to dabble in it last winter. Um, mm-hmm. The the cozier stuff. Mostly, I I wear a lot of sweaters in the winter, and so I was always just like, yeah, I'm just gonna keep wearing my sweaters and not worry about it. But then last year, I made a bunch of flannel shirts, and I kind of love them. So um, we'll have to look at making maybe some more of those. And mm-hmm. um, when I was in Vienna, I got a lovely super soft like kitten soft um sweater knit remnant and i don't know that it's enough to make a whole sweater it might have to be short sleeved but um i need Mm -hmm. to do something with that for sure Mm -hmm. or you could just cut the sleeves in like the sweater knit if you had something different and matching good idea kind of block it i've done that before yeah because sometimes for me it's my arm if if my arms are covered and warm then i'm warm it's that's why vests don't do it for me. It's like my arms really need to be co- cozy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's just I, me. <laughs> I, I hear yeah. I don't wear a lot of vests either. I always want to, and then when I put them on, I'm like, no, this I isn't know. working. I see all these cute puffer puffer vests, and I they just don't keep me warm. I need I need the I need the arms, guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, what would be your favorite cozy fabrics to work with? Like, I'm guessing Kate, yours would be flannel. Oh yeah, I like I like flannel. Um, sticks together a little bit a little weird but it's cotton so it um mm-hmm. so it's it's nice and and it mostly cooperative um my big advice with flannel um if you don't already know this wash it in hot 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 water before you use it and then dry it on your highest setting because that stuff will shrink and mm-hmm. you want it to shrink before you cut out your clothes Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I've definitely learned that one the hard time. <laughs> uh, the hard way, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> More than once, which is very sad. But <laughs> <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> well, again, as we've discussed, I don't have laundry in my, in my right. unit. So, it, yeah. So that's why I can't remember the last flannel thing. I've sewn them. <laughs> <laughs> so what would be your favorite cozy fabric, Amanda? Would it be then like a sweater knit or yeah, a jersey? Yeah, I think probably I do like fringe terry. Um, I mean, I've, mm-hmm. I've worked with a bunch of different kinds, and I like that it has a little bit of structure to it. Um, mm-hmm. But I also have um, that has um, that has not worked out for me well in the past because I've definitely used French terry that wasn't quite stretchy enough for things, and then you finish, uh. you make it, and it's a little bit constricting. So. Finding that perfect French terry is probably my, is probably the coziest I go. I do like sweater knits. Um, I've made quite mm-hmm. a few things for my daughter with sweater knits, but I think oh. for me, when it comes to super cozy fabrics, um, I don't know. I find that a lot of them are kind of more on the polyester end of the spectrum and oh, kind of more yeah. synthetic and. I don't know. That doesn't. I don't know. It it often doesn't work well with my body, and it makes me itchy, um, or just mm-hmm. super hot. Um, so that that's probably why I haven't been too experimental. But um, so I think French terry is usually that's my go to mm-hmm. as soon as it gets cold. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm loving working with like minky and faux fur mm. lately for actual garments because another question I had was sometimes like these cozy fabrics like minky and faux furs and stuff like that can just be 
thought of as like home decor sewing and sometimes it's hard to cross them over into into garment sewing i know i've made a couple of friends baby quilts out of minky but then i've been seeing it's actually really on on trend for these um really fuzzy like shearling right. pullover and, st- and stuff in like high fashion and boutiques and so and it's kind of exciting because they are expensive to buy but then if you make them yourself you know they're it's kind of that way of saving money for right. sewing which is kind of very rare nowadays <laughs> they can get very very expensive but i remember my favorite thing and i'll make sure to share this um in the show notes is my favorite cozy thing that I made was it was yeah like a sweatshirting for the sleeves and then this fur faux fur body and it was like a pullover and it was so cute and cozy it was like a faux fur sweater and I get compliments on it every time I wear it but I would never thought to you think of faux fur even like in a coat or something but mixing it with Mm -hmm. some like zipper uh, like a zipper and sweatshirting made it this kind of cool and it's still one of my favorite things that I've coziest things that I've sewn and oh I just I I, it's actually it's so funny that we're talking about um, recording this episode today because it's like the first snowfall in Toronto so I'm looking at my window right now and it's all flurry and and the the actual first substantial one, so I just want to go like run in the snow in all my cozy sweaters. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that's neat. It's snowing here too, but I don't think it's the first of you the season. You guys have had snow for a while, though, we've right? Had, we've had a lot of snow, but um, we had a really warm weekend, and yes, I think that's the only way I get through. Yeah, definitely. Well, and I you apparently these, like, missed a, um, a really dramatic set of snowy days yes, while I did. was out of town, out of country. Yeah. Um, what you said though was interesting, Meg. I saw I saw two two things going on on the outerwear side when I was in Vienna. Oh. Sorry, I'm going to be doing this for a while. Oh um, no, please please do. And one of them was puffer coats. Puffer coats were really big, but yes. I did see a lot of yeah. I did see a lot of uh, fur as well. And I don't know how much of it was faux and how much of it was real. Um, I know that my uh, my cousin-in-law that I met a couple times while I was there had this fantastic coat, which I'm pretty sure was faux um, because it was orange, but um, it really felt real. It was it was amazing. And I was sitting there looking at all of the um, fur in the windows and stuff and thinking, man, I need to get a hold of some faux fur and see if I can pull off a faux fur coat. I don't even know where to start with that. <laughs> um, I honestly have no idea, but um, maybe I'll do some research and and get on that. We'll have mm-hmm. to see. But yeah. Well, actually, kind of. I'll mention. I'm ju- I'm jumping ahead a little bit. But for Sojo, I kind of started on my so frosting nice. um, for the month, and I'm I posted it on my personal Instagram as well that I'm sewing the closet case patterns Claire coat mm, in I the Shannon coat. fabrics, like metallic faux fur. Um, which is I'm super excited about. Uh, I, I just love like the metallic mix with the fur. It's it's so cool. It's like it was just like dipped in like shiny metallic y I don't know. So frosting. what you're telling so me <laughs> So what you're telling me is where I start with that is talk to you about it. <laughs> yeah, you can talk Pretty to much. me about it. Yeah. And <laughs> house expert. There. And this also reminds me I need to share the uh tutorial as well. I need to actually uh type it up, but I made a faux fur shrug, a white faux fur shrug. Uh for my wedding actually. Mm-hmm. But I never got to wear it because it was it was actually the perfect hot night, uh, so I didn't luckily need it, but I was super prepared, and <laughs> yeah, it was yeah, it was very cozy when I nice. tried it on. But yeah, that reminds me, actually, I do need to type that up and share it because it's a really, really quick and easy thing to make, and it looks so luxurious and expensive, and you really don't even need that much faux fur because that's sometimes faux fur yardage can be a little pricey, mm-hmm. too, but... Uh, a little goes a lot, even like a little scrap of anything really cozy. You can, there's lots of little things that you can do um, with cozy fabrics for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. I actually wanted mm-hmm. to ask Amanda. She's um, wearing a very fuzzy cardigan right now. It's like duster length oh. and awesome. Oh. And I want to steal it from her and snuggle into it. So I want to know what kind of fabric it is. Um, it is a wool boucle. And yes. it is. Oh. it does have like the little loop-de-loops on the top. But honestly, the inside is not quite as cozy as the outside, uh, which I feel like happens that's, sometimes. You know what? 
that is I was I have that written yeah. down uh, it's kind of like a in my pros and cons of fuzzy fat but sometimes the outside is more cozy than the inside yes <laughs> that is the case yeah. with this That's although fair. I do love it it's kind of like I don't know yeah kind of a teddy bear almost um, feel to it but I did think about another cozy fabric that I like it's not furry though but I do really like quilted fabrics Mm -hmm. and also (gasps) like making or or quilting your own fabric and then using it for something I feel like Mm -hmm. I feel like that has been um, you know it's kind of gone out and come back in and gone out in terms of um, fashion trends and stuff but I do I really do love quilted stuff and quilted jackets I think in particular Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I I think they can definitely get a little blankety looking, but I am okay with that. But but that look is in, you know. Yeah, the blanket (laughs) as jacket. I love it. Yeah. Blanket as jacket. Love that. I've actually yeah, I shared with I've got a couple uh-huh. um I mean I've I've made some jackets that have quilting, so you have to quilt the layers together, but I've also a couple of my Instagram contacts are doing like finding um duvets and quilted blankets in thrift stores and turning them into jackets, which I just think is kind of genius because then you get to skip the whole quilting part. Um, And I don't know, they they end up looking amazing. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been toying with doing something like that. What I kind of want to do is um, kind of take more time to make something and kind of rush into it. So I do want to take a bunch of like cozy scraps and mm-hmm. almost put them all together like like a quilt and then cut the shape out of that and then quilt it. Like I do want something more crafty uh, to work on maybe during the winter. That's something I've been thinking about instead of just like rushing through all yeah. these mm-hmm. pro- projects. Just one thing that I focus a little bit of time on because um, I really would like to do that. You know, we I really know. I love that look. I know, I do too. We we really haven't talked too much about velvet. I mean, I feel like velvet's right. a cozy fabric that It is definitely a cozy fabric. I, yeah. I mean, I think you can wear it outside of fall and winter and early spring, mm-hmm. but I definitely tend to wear it more um during those times. Yeah, you kind of mm-hmm. look at it in the middle of summer and you're like, mm, too hot. It looks hot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, Berta actually has in the November issue, I, I know I sent it to you, Amanda, a picture. It's yes. a puffer velvet quilted jacket, and it's so cool. Wow. I'm sure it's like, and, it, and it, I like how there's large quilt lines, so it's totally, you know, accessible to quilt that yourself. Right, right. And I just, and then you could pick the type of, you know, velvet you want and the backing, and that is is so chic too and it's how you can wear a puffer jacket kind of for evening wear right. and fancy and luxurious i that is i love that and that's the first time i've seen that so that was really cool now i have sewn a lot more recently with stretch velvet than like right, super like fancy like silk velvet, velvet yeah. or anything like that mm-hmm. how about you guys have you sewn a lot with like velvet velvet I'm not sure I've ever sewn actual real velvet. Yeah. Anything more than maybe a scrap. Um, I mean, velveteen, sure. Yeah. Um, and stretch okay. velvet, sh- sure. And crushed velvet. Mm-hmm. Um, Pre crushed, you know, the kind where you don't have to worry about crushing it. But right. I don't know that I've actually ever taken a nice, a nice piece of actual velvet and sewn it. I think I'm kind of terrified by the very Me too. idea. Mm-hmm. I've actually only sewn one thing in real velvet. Like, I got the velvet in the home just. Dis- decor section right. of, the, of the fabric store um but someone we used to to work with i made her a uh, maroon oh, velvet yeah. bomber jacket do you remember yes that? i do it was so mm-hmm. cute yeah and i know she said i i always love when people message me something that they've made and they say oh they it's one of their favorite things and they always get compliments on it so that was that's one of those pieces that uh i made for her and she really likes it and that was my experience uh sewing with that and actually funny and i had just dabbled in embroidery right. and this was, i i wanted but there are embroidered flowers on it but i didn't and I did, obviously, you know, as I was saying last episode, I don't like to do a lot of research and, in, you know, and so in. I just tried to embroider on the velvet and I was like, oh, this isn't working. So I actually embroidered on and instead of like troubleshooting, I just said, oh, I just think, you know, think of things myself. And so I embroidered on a separate piece of fabric and then cut it out and then hand stitched it oh, on to the yeah. velvet jacket. That's a way to do it for sure. Yeah. 
And because it was over a seam and I didn't know how to, mm-hmm. I don't know, I was having trouble with placing in the hoop exactly where the the translation of the hoop to the spot on the, I'm a lot better now. This was like several years ago. Mm-hmm. So um, my embroidery skills have gone up, but I just remember that actually that, yeah, that velvet, velvet bomber jacket was kind of an embroidery bomb a little bit too, but, <laughs> <laughs> but it was super chic. Uh, totally. Yeah, and cozy. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what are some of the pros and cons of working with fuzzy and cozy fabrics, do you think? I think it depends on the fabric. Yeah. I mean, some of them, like flannel, you get the shrinkage, but that's about it. Right. Other than that, it's pretty easy to work with. But then you start cutting on some minky, and then, oh, yeah, there's I know. minky all Honestly, over the place. Honestly, that's the biggest con for me is the... Mess. You know, I already have two bunnies running around here. There's rabbit, literally rabbit for just went off eye level floating in front of me right as we were recording. <laughs> I don't need to add more fluffy things into the mix, but um, definitely when it's, you know, minus like a million degrees here, having that is definitely the the, the pro for me. But the cutting is just the yeah. worst. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, I think you get that That's with cool. the faux fur as well. It's just. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. I've seen something online. I, I need to do more research into it, but it's some sort of like adhesive cutting mat. Have you guys seen something like that before? No. And if you cut minky, uh, it, it sticks to the... I hope this wasn't just a dream. Mm-hmm. I think I saw <laughs> I mean, it should exist. <laughs> an ad somewhere or um, something online, like an... Inst- uh, I, I'm sure I need... Okay, now I need to definitely Google this, but it's some sort of like adhesive cutting mat where you cut it and then you lift it up at all, like the fluff stays stuck to the mat and then you like wipe it clean or something. So that would be something huh. good to have for sure. That sounds like... <laughs> um... What is it? The the cricket maker machine has some maybe it has was some, that has some like cutting yeah. cutting surfaces that you put into the machine that are kind of sticky like are that to like, keep the fabric in yeah. place. Are they sticky or is it yeah. like a static thing? I don't know. Hmm. I haven't actually I played around with it very much. But interesting. Yeah. We'll, we'll do our research and report back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, and just the for me, it's the amount of pins I need to use. Mm-hmm. I find that kind of that's another uh, a tip working with minky and more for faux furs is just pin like literally every half of an inch. <laughs> and use something with an obvious <laughs> head so you don't lose them. Yes, mm. exactly. Yeah. And just taking the time to, especially with longer pile faux furs. I learned this when I made a bunch of headbands, faux fur headbands last year for the holidays is even just like a little seam, but it makes all the difference. And I and I actually do talk about this in my faux fur shrug uh, post that, well, I will talk about it once I write it and share. <laughs> <laughs> it, um, the, using your fingers to put all the piles of fur within the seam, it's so annoying to do, but it, then it makes the seam mm-hmm. in, basically invisible and easier to sew and you tuck in every little hair into the seam and mm. then pin it. And st- so, and that's kind of a tip too when you're working with um, faux fur in terms of cozy fabric. Yeah, I didn't uh, know that one. Guys, yeah. That's a good tip. Thanks, mm-hmm. Meg. Oh, no problem. I have some good pictures of it, uh, of doing it too, but it really, really, really makes a difference. Um, you know, and sometimes then, taking those extra steps to do something. Oh my gosh. It, it's so annoying mm-hmm. when you're doing it and then it makes everything so much better as soon as you start stitching. Oh, I know. I know. Then obviously the the big tip for especially faux fur, and if you have like a really high pile cozy fabric too, is to avoid scissors or rotary cutters even. is just using uh, a knife and cutting the backing. You drastically reduce the amount of fuzzies flying in the air. Right. Make, it, make a point <laughs> but, of trying to cut the, the pile as little as possible. Yes. I have a question, and, actually. Yeah. Do you, when you're doing faux fur or anything with that big a pile, do you tend to do them on the serger or the sewing machine? No, the the sewing machine. Sewing machine, okay. Yeah, I, I yeah, I haven't really surged with uh, faux fur because sometimes, the, usually the backing is like a knit, so right. you don't need to worry about it unraveling uh, right. or unfraying too much. So yeah, I try to avoid my serger with, with even 
minky and stuff because I just don't like things getting all clogged up and right. I, don't I guess know. it just I cuts it more even more. Too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And with the pins, I do. I find I have more success when I sew really slowly and leave the pins in as I sew, mm. and mm-hmm. uh, I find I have more success in that too. Um, <laughs> Certain and then another this, when it's good to sew huh? over pins. <laughs> Um, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> there are some circumstances where it's good to sew over oh, pants. I know. I know. I generally don't like to. Yeah, because <laughs> I try not to. <gasps> yeah. Um, on any given on any given seam, I usually pull out like half to two thirds of my pins and forget about the other ones until I've already sewn over them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you guys have any tips of, uh, from when you have worked with a cozy fabric? Any thing that you've learned from or made a mistake from that next time you work with that fabric you'll do something differently have you figured anything out like that you know I think the the most awesome mistakes I've made with um, particularly napped fabric I think I've probably done it with corduroy before but um, I was making these stretch velvet kind of wide leg pants and the velvet was kind of um, ribbed but I, mm-hmm. so I had been making a lot of pants and I <clears throat> was trying to conserve fabric. So I nested the tops of the pants together. And of course, that meant that the nap was going different directions on the front and the right. back of the pants. Yeah. So I went to get more fabric and I cut them out the wrong way again. Um, oh, no. Yeah, it was just one of those moments. So I think what I ended up doing was sewing the back to the back and it was okay because they were kind of big high waisted elastic waist pants so it didn't really matter oh, okay. too much um, but I feel like that was that was a good I, I don't tend to work with napped fabrics um, so I understand why that happened but definitely next time I do that's going to be on my brain mm-hmm. my only major tip that I can think of other than pre-washing the flannel um is if you're working with a sweater knit, um, be aware of how much it stretches, and you may want some negative ease depending on what you're doing. Because oh, I made totally. a I made a cardigan for mm-hmm. this trip, and it ended up being so loose in the arms. I was yeah. constantly fighting with it, and they were long, so that most of the time I was walking around with my with like five inches of sweater knit hanging below my fingers, <laughs> and then I'd like kind of shove it up my arms, but it wouldn't stick on my sleeves enough, and then it would fall down again, and that was kind of irritating. And I had added some width to the sleeves because I'm like layering it right, but it turns out I should not have done that. So make uh-huh. sure you're thinking about your ease when you're working with a sweater knit yeah and when they're too loose sometimes the seams can look all ripply especially Mm -hmm. the hem if it needs to kind of stretch over the body i know i've learned that too and i'm the the first like turtleneck that i i stitched together i definitely learned that needs to be a little smaller totally than your body because those those baby fabrics stretch a lot like (laughs) a lot sometimes like totally which they're actually good for um actually the same uh friend that i sewed the the velvet bomber jacket for i sewed her a turtleneck to uh while she was pregnant and she could wear it it was so stretchy that <laughs> she wore it during her pregnancy and uh and after so nice that's yeah yeah that was cool um just before we move on i want to cover two more tips that i have uh, when that i've experienced when sewing with these kind of um, cozy fabrics, especially minky and faux fur too, and anything with a high pile or lots of stretch or just kind of, because minky can, can sometimes be slippery as well mm-hmm. um, when you put it right sides together. So I know uh, online I've read, you know, you can use a walking foot that helps, but I actually find a walking foot doesn't help me so much. I find that when I do, you know, you can adjust the pressure Mm -hmm. on your pressure foot Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if you put it lighter I find that helps tremendously so not having like like getting to the lighter pressure that's down I just find that even more helpful I know maybe it could vary from machine to machine but I've used that on two different machines two different brands and everything and it worked better both times just to kind of not have it pushing down so much Mm -hmm. helped everything kind of roll through so if you are having difficulties with a walking foot or just sewing that just try lighten up a little bit yeah your pressure (laughs) i find that that helps sometimes with knits too if your knits Mm. are being stubborn oh totally Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And then another one, if you are, like we were talking about this issue before, having something fuzzy on the the right side and not as much as the wrong side. You can actually shop and find really cool double-faced fabrics. Mm. I know, and those are sometimes really... And then you don't have to worry about lining or anything. I know I found one that I used for a coat. It was like a neoprene on the outside, but the inside was a fleece. And so I only had to use one layer. So kind of really shopping around for maybe double-duty fabrics. If they're cozy on one side it's and... Um, more fashiony on the other, or I've I have some faux furs that are equally as fuzzy on either side, and those make really good projects. I made a house coat in one uh, because then it was like fuzzy on on both sides. So just to shop around a little bit to find a double faced cozy fabric makes it a little bit easier. Yeah, for sure. Wasn't your jacket mm-hmm. um, double faced? Yeah, my Vienna jacket had wool on the outside oh, and fleece it? on the inside. Oh, yeah. it was so oh, cozy. Perfect. Super cozy. Not when the wind started blowing. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. It was field tested, huh? Yeah, I, I, I kind of wished um, that I had uh, that that it because it only buttoned right over right right about to the uh, bus line. It didn't mm-hmm. button all the way down. Oh, and right. That kind it of, wasn't it all the way right. Yeah, that that I kind of regretted, and I actually had to move my buttons halfway through the trip because it just wasn't hanging right. Oh. <laughs> so mm. I, I'm like, hmm, sewing kit, move my buttons. Nice. Wow. Well, there you go. So, so maybe cozy. hopefully we've inspired you to make something cozy using cozy fabrics for your next sewing project. Yeah, and we'll start talking about what kind of things yeah, to make and exactly. in just a minute. Mm-hmm. It is time for a cozy pattern roll call. When I think about cozy patterns, I really think about two things. Um, One is kind of basics for everyday wear, and then also layers to help you kind of extend the life of things that you may be made and wear uh, more heavily in the warm weather seasons. So I thought um, we could go through a few categories. I'm going to share a a few of my faves, um, a few sewing community favorites, and then also Kate and Meg, feel free to chime in whenever you want to. I will definitely do that. Um, However, as I've just kind of started looking into the cozy stuff and dabbling in it, I'm actually looking to learn more from this segment than I am to contribute to it. Okay. That's fair enough. I'm Um, excited. Fair enough. I think, um, yeah, this will just get the the inspiration and the juices flowing. Even doing a little bit of research for this, um, I was getting inspired. So um, I hope it does the same for folks at home. Um, And I guess let's start with just kind of what are your go-to cozy patterns? Do you have any that you, Kate, you mentioned you've made a few in flannel. Uh, Meg, I'm assuming you've got some favorites too. Let's start there. They're they're all gallery tunics. In flannel? All gallery tunics and flannel. That's that's what I've done at this point. That's your go-to. And I have my and I have my Estes dress and my Estes top. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it's mostly gallery. Gallery everywhere. Mm -hmm. I've got a problem, you guys. (laughs) Nah. (laughs) Well, mine. I think I've mentioned my turtleneck addiction in many episodes. But yeah, for I guess that's for a sweater knit. For a cozy knit, I'm still looking for a perfect like pullover pattern for because I do want to start get making a lot more cozy pullovers and kind of more athleisure like things but I do have like a basic turtleneck for my sweater knits. What pattern is that? Is yeah. that a Berta style pattern? It, it is a Berta. It is a Berta pattern. I can't remember off the top of my head which number but I'll definitely link to it in uh, the show notes. Awesome. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Well I thought let's dive in on tops because I feel like um, you can just have a little bit more fun with cozy tops. Um, oh yeah. So I think um, the sewing community favorite here and this is not the be all end all list I'm just this is my observations and what people in my feed are making but um, the toaster sweater by Sew House 7 is a definite favorite the pattern has two um, two versions one is kind of like a funnel neck and the other is more of a traditional turtleneck Um, There's even, I think, a Toaster Tuesday hashtag. I have seen this pattern sewn up in everything from sweater knits to um, kind of more solid French terries and double knits and things. And um, man, it is just it's been out for a little while, but it is still going strong. I think it's maybe it's one of those things that people just make a new one every season because I definitely do that. Mm -hmm. Um, I just Googled it and 
I'm already obsessed. Yeah. It looks so cute. I love the one with the little higher. It's almost like a, a fo- it has like a more scoop neckline, but it's still like a high turtleneck. Yes. Oh my gosh, I want to make. I, that's on my list. Awesome, <laughs> awesome. Um, I don't know. Are you are you guys hoodie people? Do you like hoodies? Oh yes, yeah, yes I do. Um, um I don't know if I am. Yeah. I don't know. Well, that's a, you. You don't have to decide today. You can be undecided, <laughs> unaffiliated. Um, but I do. Um, there are numerous hoodie favorites out there. I really like two from Hey June Handmade. One is the Brunswick hoodie, which has a lot of kind of high end details, which I like in a hoodie. That kind of makes it a little less. Um, I mean, it's definitely still in the athleisure vein, but it also has um, just you know unique. High-end details. I'll leave it at that. Um, and also the Halifax hoodie by Hey June Handmade. I made one um, for my mom, and I have fabric to make another. And that one is um, its one of those patterns that has a bazillion options for it. Um, there's a kind of turtleneck. I believe there's kind of a cowl neck that has a drawstring in it as an option. Um, there's, there's, and it's got a neat shape. Um, there, it has kind of diagonal seam lines, and I, it's just really, um, it's flattering. It's cozy. I feel like if you made it in, you could make it in a fabric that kind of would give it a high end look. Um, and that's kind of a lot to get from a single pattern. So that's definitely one of my favorites. Um, also on the sweatshirt end is the linden sweatshirt by Greenline. Um, I think, I mean, there's, there's, it's a kind of a traditional raglan sweatshirt, but I have literally made probably eight of these. Um, Most I've, of which mm-hmm. appeared in the magazine. Yes, I have, um, yeah, maybe I can pull that up. Um, I have hacked them, I have made them into dresses, I've, had, I've added a ruffle peplum, I've done kind of color blocking, um, with the sleeves and the body, which I really love doing with raglans. Um, it is just super cozy. And I feel like that one, again, has been out there for a while. It's really basic. Um, and it's there's just a kind of a whole community of people who really love that. Again, there are other sweatshirts and other hoodies um, and other sweaters to make. Those are just kind of the three that come to mind in each of those categories. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at the Linden now, and I like how there's – almost like a summer version exactly too. So you could sew this pattern like all year right. exactly <laughs> and sometimes like i know maybe it's not for me because i like my arms um covered and cozy but even like a fuzzy like t-shirt mm-hmm. are, is super in right now right. uh like I th- i'm looking at this i think that would be a perfect little fuzzy t-shirt pattern yep. for sure yep. it's like a short sleeve sweater basically i've seen some of those or you just cut the raglan sleeves and like a fuzzy fabric right. in the body. Right. Oh, guys, my list is something go. to do with there this you is go. getting crazy. <laughs> um, I did want to talk some more about turtlenecks specifically because I think um, there are uh, – that is definitely something that comes to mind when it comes to cozy. Yeah. And I'm a mm-hmm. big fan of the Nico top by True Bias. Oh, yeah. And I know you are too, Meg. Um, there's mm-hmm. also – that one, the Nico is definitely pretty fitted – um, if you want something on the swingier, kind of drapier end of the spectrum, there's a free pattern by Tasuti Fabrics called the Monroe Turtleneck, and I have sewn a couple of those. It's got um, it's it's nice and fitted around the neck, um, but the body itself is it's got drop shoulders and it's just really roomy. And I kind of like the balance of tight at the neckline, looser at the hemline, um, and it's just a really great free pattern. Um, any other turtlenecks in the running top contender? I don't like turtlenecks. I feel choked. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm actually looking at a Nico that I have. I need to finish the. I've actually worn it once without finishing the sleeve hems. Oh, the hem, I do that all the time. Defi- yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but you, it is tighter. But it's perfect for layering. Exactly. I uh, layered it under uh, a jumper. But yeah, it's it's a great pattern too, and it's super like I I've been rewatching Friends. I've never really watched it from the beginning, and this this season in particular, I think it's like season six. Rachel's wearing all these really cute sleeveless turtlenecks mm-hmm. it's like in every episode she has a different one and they're just so classic and they look, look so awesome yep absolutely and just yeah in the in the really practical end of the spectrum too oh, yeah. like great for layering um 
Cozy pants. Um, I didn't really, I, I think kind of um, most of the pant patterns that I love, you can make in just about anything. So I think your best option mm-hmm. is to like pick a cozy pant, a, a, a pant that you love and maybe make it in a cozier fabric or think about making it lined. I have seen some people making lined jeans um, this season, and I have never experimented with that. Have you guys? No. No? No. You know, I'm still working on just basic pants. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it seems like a whole other level of difficulty and, but also warmth and coziness. Mm -hmm. Um, When I, when I hear cozy pants, I just think of sweaty yeah I just I when I wear cozy pants I just it gets very sweaty (laughs) yeah I don't I something about that that I just yeah yeah I'd rather have have the fun on the top I guess um yeah I'm definitely the same but I do think (laughs) and I think we've got a loungewear episode that will be um so we'll be diving into this a little bit more but I do think like I have room in my wardrobe probably for some more like cozy pants for wearing at home like after you get Mm -hmm. home um Mm -hmm. the true bias hudson pants are really great kind of um a little bit more special than a sweatpant they're kind of i guess they're more of a jogger um but i have made a pair of those and love them and also just putting leggings in that category like super Mm -hmm. cozy would be fun to kind of experiment with some fluffy legging fabric maybe yeah. well i've definitely gone home at the end of the day and put on a pair of loveland leggings yes. and an oversized sweatshirt and been blissfully happy yes absolutely oh yeah absolutely. that's yeah lovely so those are kind of i mean i i didn't put anything in this category on dresses or skirts because well i was actually just gonna say I have sewn three cozy skirts, yeah. and I love them because they're not as, I don't know, uh, I just find they're still cozy, but they're not as, like, I don't feel like my legs are just, like, so enclosed, and yeah. that's when they get sweaty. So. That makes sense. <laughs> but I have, yeah, and I actually, uh, um, all of them that I've sewn, I there are no pattern ones. It's just, like, a rectangle, then I surge, like, in a an elastic waistband for the skirt. I have a pleated velvet skirt. I have a Cute. metallic faux fur skirt that's super fancy. And it took me like two seconds to sew. So I love a cozy skirt because it's like you're sitting with a blanket uh, on your yeah, lap. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, those are kind of like basics. Um, but I did, let's, let's jump into talking about layers because you guys know we're going to talk about cardigans. And those oh, are God. kind of my yeah. favorite. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> yes, we're not going to talk about cardigans. You're going I mean, to talk I could about do, I could do the, the Cardi Party episode because I love Cardi them so Party. much. Oh, um, <laughs> and I think the, the three that are my favorites are the Driftless Cardigan by Green Line Studio. Um, I love the Esme Maxi Cardigan by Named, and that's actually what I'm wearing today. And um I, when I first made it, it definitely felt kind of robish, and I am apparently really into that. Um, another <laughs> sewing community fave is the Blackwood Cardigan by Helen's Closet. That one's a little bit more fitted. The Driftless is kind of grandpa sweater, kind of oversized, and the um, the Blackwood is definitely more fitted designed to be worn open so you can layer it you know over anything you want over a tank top over a t-shirt um and get that that cozy factor do you guys have any other favorites i have not really started into uh cardigans yet except for the one i recently made which um is not my favorite because i still haven't figured out the sleeves but um i would like to try some at some point so no, mm-hmm. but maybe later. Yeah, I haven't really made many cardigans, so yeah, I'm definitely now. I'm going to look into these three and maybe pick one of these to sew. Yeah, I mean, so I there are like. so many out there, yeah. um, but I do think it was one of those things that I just didn't think about sewing for a while. It's like you thought about sewing a t-shirt or a tank top, but a cardigan. I don't know. I guess. Um, I guess that's maybe when I started really learning more about sweater knits and some of those like heavier and more interesting um, and mm-hmm. more kind of ready to wear based fabrics um, than what you can sometimes find. Um, but yeah, y'all know I'm a big, 
big cardigan fan. Um, let's talk briefly about jackets. I mean, we've touched a little bit on um, some of the trends, the shearling, the puffer coats. Um, I have a favorite um, quilted coat, which is the tamarack jacket pattern by Greenline. And that one is definitely um, pretty basic on the quilting. But I um, I love it because you could totally piece it together with scraps and come up with something that's really kind of one of a kind. Um, but there's there's a lot of different directions you could head here. Um, you know, I've never made a classic wool coat. Hmm. Have you have you guys? Yeah, well, I did the uh, wool coat so oh, long right. last year. And so I made the wool pea coat and I actually wore it all. That actually reminds me, I need to get it dry clean for this because I spilled coffee all over <laughs> it uh, last the end of last year because it was my everyday coat and it's yeah so that was nice and cozy and it was a bird up pea coat pattern i'll have to remember the exact numbers there's just so many numbers and issue mm-hmm. numbers it's mm-hmm. hard to remember do you count my uh, vienna coat as a classic wool coat yeah okay it's then wool, yes i have and it's I a coat <laughs> <laughs> um i also really like anoraks and i've been seeing um a lot of people doing lined anoraks this season so kind of having more of like a performance weight fabric or, um, you know, even waxed canvas um, with a flannel on the inside. And that has got me very tempted. So lots of lots of cozy, cozy jacket options out there. Um, I didn't want to skip the other things that I forget that you can absolutely sew. Um, And I've sewn a couple of these, but I wanted to get your take on them. Um, including scarves and beanies. Like, just take your favorite fuzzy fabric or sweater knit, um, and you can even use scraps for scarves. Hats mm-hmm. are surprisingly easy to sew. We have mm-hmm. a um, we have a pattern, the basic beanie and scarf set that you know, perfect to make last minute for yourself, but also a great gift. Um, I also, in my research, found a. Um, even like a balaclava from Green Style Creations. So like pretty technical piece that you would wear if you were um, going skiing. Um, but yeah. just again, like things that you wouldn't think to sew, but you totally can. Um, yeah. Also mittens and gloves. I haven't, I haven't done a whole lot in this category. Um, but also socks. There are quite a few Ooh. sock patterns out there. Um, you know, sewn in everything from like a polar fleece, which would be more like, um, I mean, it could be a sock, but it could also be kind of a slipper, Mm -hmm. um, but also some sweater knits sewn into socks as well, which totally cozy, just totally not something I had considered doing. Yeah, I would have never thought to, I've actually have made my own slippers before, but socks I haven't, but I think those would be easier i need to look into that yeah. mm-hmm. too um, that would also be a good gift to exactly. give people too exactly mm-hmm. yeah yeah i mean i think it's all about like not forgetting all of the accessories because yeah, i think that sure. definitely right. is a big part of staying cozy mm-hmm. i saw a lot of with faux fur scraps and i've made these as gifts in the past as well is a, a circle scarf with and i do a twist mm-hmm. and so it's just like a you know, big thing that goes around your neck and it's it's not too loose, so it stays warm, so you don't need as much. So I, I sew a lot of those, so. Nice, and you have done, like, right. the headbands, I remember. Right, yes, and the yeah, headbands, that's yeah. that's, like, totally a cozy accessory. I love it. Oh, yeah, mm. super cozy. All right, well, did it work, Kate? Are you in the mood to sew cozy things? Um. Yeah, I kind of am. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Seemed a little hesitant at this time. You're like, uh. Well, I mean, yes. I, yeah. So, speaking of which, hey, let's jump into our sojo, you guys. Yeah, I'm let's feeling do very that. awkward right now. Um, so, yeah, for those of you who don't know, sojo is what's giving us our sewing inspiration right now. So, um, we've already heard from Meg. Meg, do you want to uh, re up that? Sure. Metallic faux fur coat. That's all you need Yay. to know. Clear coat. <laughs> awesome. How about you, Amanda? Well, um, I am, I feel super inspired right now, but in the kind of scatterbrained way um, where I can't really decide what to make next. But That's I will, how we always feel at the end of these episodes. I know. It's true. Um, well, I started this episode there. Um 
But I did sew something from the magazine that really inspired me. Um, we did a photo shoot here last week. And um, for that, <clears throat> and it's it's actually a project in our December Jan issue um, for making a necktie with kind of a special fabric. And the whole idea was to kind of to make that. And then you could dress up, you know, a pretty standard button up. You could dress up a V-neck sweater by just adding a little pop. And the magazine cool. includes some instructions for tying those in different ways. But I made one and I love it. And I'm I'm all about the necktie right now. All right. All about the necktie. That's right. Awesome. What about you, Kate? Um, for me, I'm just kind of starting to get back into thinking about sewing as I'm uh, getting back from my okay. trip. So um, I'm actually prepping for a sew long we're recording this week, or we're filming this week. Um, and that's actually, surprisingly, it's a coat. That's right. Um, it is uh, the Copper Mountain Coat. Um, the sew along will be in December and January. And um, I got to cut some beautiful Pendleton wool yesterday for um, nice. this coat. So I am kind of excited to put that together and see how it turns out. Oh, man, it's going to be so cute. It is. It's going to be super cute. And then after that, I might might, might start getting into a Tamarack jacket. I'm not sure. Nice. I also have to look mm-hmm. at the stuff I got in Vienna and see what I want to do with those. So mm-hmm. my stash grew a little bit. That's how <laughs> it happens. And now I really, I a toaster sweater is That's not, next. going to be. That's nice. next. I my next All right. Too. Yeah, definitely my next. All right. So moving on to our sew and tell segment, um, we are kind of settled into our new office. So we are going to go back to our old way of doing this, which is to read the question here on the air, and then we will read your answers in our next episode. So um, our question for this week is, what's the coziest thing you've ever sewn? Uh, Email us, comment on our show notes page or Instagram, and we may read your answer in our next episode. Cozy. Mm-hmm. Cozy. Yes, I'm feeling nice and, and snuggly right now, everybody. How are you feeling? Yeah, I need some hot cocoa. Ooh, that sounds great. Mm-hmm. Oh, do you know what I've been obsessed with is I had my first, you know, London Fog drink. Have you ever had no. one before? Oh, maybe it's a can. It must not be a Canadian thing. I don't know, but it's it's this fancy drink I get at Starbucks, and I've gotten one every day since. And it's it's basically like steeped Earl Grey tea, vanilla syrup, and steamed milk. Oh, that sounds it's so really good. good. I, I I think I'm gonna go get one. Right <laughs> sounds good. Snuggle, and then snuggle my bunny, which is probably the coziest things that I've had. Yes. <laughs> oh yes, bunny that's, snuggling. That's a perfect combo. But, yeah. All right. Thanks for talking cozy yeah. stuff with me, guys. Thanks so yeah. much. Um, until next time. Yeah. Until next time. Happy stitching. Bye, everyone. For links to everything we talked about in this episode, go to our show notes page at sodaily.com slash sewandtell. If you want to get in touch with us, you can email us at sewandtellpodcast at goldenpeakmedia.com or visit us on Instagram at sewandtellpod. Answer the so-and-tell question, tell us your sojo, or just leave us some feedback. If you enjoyed our show, please subscribe on your podcasting platform of choice. And please leave us a review, ideally a good one, because that helps listeners like you find our podcast. And tell your sewing friends about us, too. Thanks for listening, and happy stitching. So and Tell is produced by Meg Healy, Amanda Carestio, and me, Kate Zeinard. Our consulting producer is Ron Doyle, and our executive producer is Jared Mayer.